For USCFootball.com, I'm Keely Orr here with Shotgun Spratling for instant analysis of USC's eighth practice of spring camp. Now you might be wondering, well, why are we in the Tunnel Vision studio? Well, <laughs> Thursdays are naturally the only day we don't see practice. We only get to hear from coaches and players. And today we heard from cornerbacks coach Dante Williams and cornerback Chris Steele. I guess, Shotgun, let's start off first with Dante Williams' overall thoughts. What did you take away from this morning's press conference? I mean, the fact that they are being able to put their own stuff in, that was one of the things that he said that, you know, last year in fall camp, because they didn't have spring camp last year, they were basically focused on their opponents and what they were, you know, what they're going to be seeing. So they're running a lot of plays and seeing a lot of plays that the opposing offense would be doing instead of focusing on their individual players. And he says that the defense has been able to do that a little bit more during this spring camp. So I think that's really big for them. And he's seen some growth from them in the, because of those, that ability to focus in on individuals rather than focus on the plays that they're going to be running against on the Saturday. Um, so I think that was one of the big things that stood out and that, Hey, it's an open competition. Every single day is going to be an open competition. You know, someone asked, you know, who who's you know who's the front runner for that cornerback spot opposite of Chris Steele, and he said Chris Steele. He didn't got a job yet. You know, no one gets a job in, until the Saturday of the game. So you know, he that's his mentality. It's always going to be competition, and I think that you're definitely seeing that from his group that they are going to be competing the entire time. Now, when we get to hear from a position coach, usually we try and sprinkle in questions about certain players, try and get as much individual info as we can. It's hard, though, because the depth chart is usually super deep. But today we got to ask as many questions as we wanted because there's only four scholarship cornerbacks on the roster right now. So I guess let's run down player by player shotgun. Uh, Isaac Taylor Stewart, that's a guy who uh, Dante said that is progressing every day, but consistency is key for him. Yeah, definitely. That's the one thing he said that he has all the skill set that you're looking for in a cornerback, but he's got to put it together. He said two plays in a row is not enough. He said you can't have two good plays and one bad play. That's when you're getting burnt behind, uh, you know, getting a ball over the top of you or something. So you know, it's about consistency for him. And he said he's taking some big strides there. And he was the guy that you know uh, that Dante was asked, well, is he kind of taking a step forward and becoming that that uh, you know the the other starter on the other side beside Chris Steele? And he said, no, this is going to be competition the whole time. And that's something. Thing, you know, you're seeing those young guys are making some plays. Isaac Taylor Stewart, I think, has taken a step forward this spring, but he's got to continue to make plays and do it throughout the spring and then into the fall as well. Now for the other six, uh, Josh Jackson, that's a guy who switched from wide receiver to cornerback at the end of last season. And Dante Williams said, you know, I knew he had talent, but I wasn't sure if he was going to have that defensive mindset. What do you have to say about the other six? Yeah, you know, he thought he would have a defensive mindset because when he was at Oregon, he said, when I was at another school, he didn't, <laughs> didn't mention Oregon Don't by name. Don't want to name it. But he said that, you know, when I was in another school, I actually offered him as a cornerback. And so, you know, he had seen this potential skill set there, and he said, you know, the first five yards is the back pedal. That's the, you know, that's the part that's new. He said, but then after that, he turns into a receiver. Let's go get the ball. That's what they want him to do, and that's what Joshua Jackson has done really well. But he said the one thing he didn't know is about that defensive mindset to come up and make a tackle. And he said he's been really pleased with the fact that Joshua Jackson is, is throwing his body in there, willing to go take on blocks and go in and make tackles as well. So he's been a guy that's really impressed us so far this spring, and I think he's impressed Dante Williams and the defensive coaching staff so far as well. Mm -hmm. The next guy we heard about was Jaden Williams. He's a guy who we've noticed. We've seen flashes of 14 each. Each practice. What did what did Dante have to say about him? Yeah, I think he's been a standout the last week or so. You know, he had a you know a pick six on Saturday. On Tuesday, he had another interception. And Dante said that he's taken a really big jump because he's focused on you know the mental aspect of it. And he said once he's able to comprehend and, and translate everything that he's hearing from the coaches and put it to work on the field, then it becomes ninety percent mental and ten percent physical. That's what they want out of their cornerbacks. And he said, you know, similar thing with Chris Steele. He said it's fifty. It was 50-50 for Jaden Williams before, where he's trying to be too physical, trying to use his physicality rather than using his intelligence and knowing what's coming from the wide receiver. You know, he's just trying to out physical and, and do things with his skill set that he has physically rather than doing that. He wants him to be able to beat a wide receiver mentally, and then that last ten percent is going to make the play on the ball instead of you know you know getting handsy with the receiver early. It's being off the receiver, seeing the ball coming, and then using your hands to pick off a pass. That's what he wants those hands to be used for. Mm -hmm. Now you mentioned Chris Steele. We got to hear his goals for the 2021 season. What do you have to say about that shotgun? 
he, you know, he was asked about his individual goals for the season, and you know, he has lofty ones, and yep. that's a, a positive thing. I think you want guys to be setting their goals high and to be trying to achieve them. Are they out of the question? No, I, I think they're not out of the question. Those goals are going to be difficult to attain, though. The probably the easiest one is you know he has an individual goal of getting five interceptions. In a 12-game season, that's you know uh, quite possible for him. He's got the you know in the, similar to Jaden Williams, he's been there. He's been in great position actually several times and had the ball hit off of him or you know be knocked it away, but not being able to make that play. That's been an emphasis for him is to show his ball skills, go and make plays on the ball and, and intercept the pass rather than just knocking it away or just being there with the receiver and allowing a catch and making an immediate tackle. Let's make a you know let's turn the game, turn the tide, and get an interception. So that's the first one getting five interceptions highly attainable goal I think there you know it's always difficult you know because it depends the more interceptions you get early in the season the harder it's going to be to get those because teams are going to stop throwing at you but I think that one's easily attainable Mm -hmm. the next one a unanimous first team All-American not just an All-American he doesn't want to be the college sports madness third team honorable mention All-American no he wants unanimous first team All-American status now that's going to take more than that five picks you're going to have to get you know eight or nine and you have to be locked down on defensively but you know, Chris still has the skill set. If he moves his feet and, and you know doesn't play with just his hands, he definitely can do that. And then he said, you know, that would lead into his final goal, which is to be a high draft pick in the upcoming season, to be a three and done type of player. And again, he has the skill set and he has the potential to do it, but he's got to continue to work at it. Consistency is a key for him as well as Isaac Taylor Stewart, and that starts with moving his feet really well and not just being, you know, not just being a physical cornerback, but using his length. And that's one of the things he pointed out that I've got to use my length a little bit better instead of just using my hands. Be able to, you know, hit a receiver, knock them off track, but then to be able to create some separation and go get the ball myself. Mm-hmm. Now I know Dante said that there are no uh, secure positions, but shotgun. I'm putting the cornerbacks coach hat on you temporarily right now. Uh, who do you think is standing out at both positions? The, the thing is that entire position group has stood out. And part of it is because they're getting plenty of opportunities. Yeah. You know, with only four scholarship guys, they're going as many reps as they can take, basically. But we've seen good flashes from everyone. You, know, you haven't seen consistently someone getting beat, which was the case in previous years. Even with Jaden Williams last year, you know, he was a guy that some of the wide receivers could pick on. I don't think that's the case anymore. You saw him actually in the first couple practices. Drake London got the better of him. I think he's, you know, stepped up and had a better, uh, better run at that matchup in particular. And just had better practices overall the last two games or last two practices excuse me so I, I think that you know all the the cornerbacks have stood out I think right now Chris Steele's you know the incumbent and I think it's going to be hard for anyone to knock him out of that position and I think Isaac Taylor Stewart taking his game to another level now let's see can he do it on Saturday in the spring game that'll be the first test but then can he consistently show it because again we've seen them flash it seen those flashes and like Dante said you know you got to do it every play not just a couple plays mm-hmm. and speaking of the spring game Chris Steele was asked about that he said it's a little different when you actually get to play in front of mom and dad and little <laughs> sister so that will be great for the players but what are you expecting for the spring game shotgun you know, I think they're going to try to put on a show. You know, just the first time they're able to be in front of fans in a long time, and they want to, you know, they want to show out. So maybe, you know, maybe we'll even see a couple trick plays, some razzle dazzle stuff from really? the coaching okay. staff. Just you know, stuff that they probably won't use in the during the season. Stuff that they're not giving away on film necessarily. Probably going to be pretty vanilla otherwise. But maybe they'll throw in an extra play or two just to kind of, you know, jazz things up a little bit for the fans that will be in attendance because they're going to be super excited to actually hear people cheering for once. Uh, So I'm excited to see who's going to make that standout play. Remember two years ago, even in the glorified practice that was the Spring Showcase, Drake Jackson making the one-handed grab and taking it back for a pick six. Who's going to make one of those this this week on on Saturday? Who's going to stand out and, and be a top performer? Is it one of those freshman quarterbacks? Are they going to make a throw that wows us? Is it one of those newcomers in the in the secondary? Or is it one of these four cornerbacks? I could easily see someone taking a pick six to the house as well. Yeah, all righty. Any final thoughts, Shotgun, before we wrap it up? No, I think it's an interesting group to watch just because there's so few numbers there. <laughs> yeah. They'll get some reinforcements in the offseason. They'll get Prophet Brown and get Sierra Wright, add some more depth there. Um, but it, it's it's going to be a competitive battle, and that's, that's fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Alrighty, that's going to wrap it up for USC's Thursday morning media availability, also day eight of spring camp. For Shotgun Spratling, I'm Keely Orr. For more, check out uscfootball.com.